So this evening, fairly pedestrian task, we're going to be replacing some brake hoses. And whilst these are Shimano brakes, the process is more or less the same for every different brand. The only differences are usually that the barbs are specific and the olives and the, are specific for each brand. So ensure when you are replacing, that you're either going for the same as the manufacturer, so SRAM hoses for SRAM brakes. And if you're getting third party hoses like um, Goodrich or Jaguar, that you get the correct barb and olive set for your specific brake. But apart from that, the general process is pretty much exactly the same. There's some kind of banjo bolt normally at the caliper end, and there's a barb and olive arrangement that crushes to the master cylinder at the lever end, and the rest is just measuring. So it's a fairly simple task. Now you do get specialist tools for this, ones for cutting the cable, ones for pressing the olive in, but for the regularity that you'll be doing this, you can do this whole job with really simple tools. And quite often you'll get um, tools with your cable kit. So you'll get the little kind of Shimano pencil sharpener clamps that we'll be working with this evening. So all the tools we're gonna to be using are things that will either come with the kit or things that you'll have already in your home shop. Now there are a few different re reasons why you might need to replace your hoses. They might be damaged from a crash, for example, or they might be too short or too long when fitting onto a new bike or frame or new brake set. Quite often new brakes will come with an unnecessarily long hose to allow you to cut that hose to the correct length for your frame. In my case, this hose has never been long enough and that's two years later. So it's time to do something about it because it's just suboptimal and it's kind of bugging me. So with that in mind, the first thing we need to do is drain the brake fluid that's in the old hose. So I'll start off by removing the rear wheel and the brake pads because obviously we don't want any brake fluid contaminating what we're doing. Now I'm just going to remove the caliper from the frame as well as we're just going to be letting gravity take its course to purge as much of the system as possible for removing the cable. Just like with a brake bleed, we want the master cylinder on the level and at the high point of the run. So at this stage, I'm going to take the dust cap off, put that somewhere safe. And then I can open the bleed valve. So at the master cylinder at the lever end, I can take out the bleed port screw, making sure not to lose that O-ring. And then air will start to get in and the oil will start to flow out the bottom. So I think that's the system more or less purged. We're now getting a healthy stream of air bubbles. So I can now detach the hose without fear of losing too much oil spilling all over the floor. And before I detach anything, I'm just going to close up the bleed port. Detach my drain bottle. So time to remove the old hose. I'm going to start the caliper end. Undo the banjo bolt. Thread that in and set that to one side. Same deal with the master cylinder lever end. Price back the rubber cover. There'll be a nut. Now at this point, try not to squeeze the lever because any fluid or mineral oil that's left in there, it's going to pour out as soon as you squeeze that. Out comes the old compression nut and barb. At this stage, probably a good time to give everything a good clean down. Nice, clean and uncontaminated. Like there's no mineral or dot fluid because that's the last thing you want is dot fluid on your paintwork. I'll just strip that right off. And before cutting and prepping our new hose, we need to measure it. Now measuring the hose is probably the most important part of the whole thing. Now there's a few rules of thumb that I like to use when measuring cables, but basically I want to be able to rotate my handlebars pretty much a full 180 before they start to snag. Reason being, if in, if in a crash, I want them to be able to turn freely before they start pulling on, you know, master cylinders or calipers and things like that. If you're replacing a hose that was damaged, 
then chances are the hose is the correct length, especially if you bought that as a built bike. So in that situation, just measure it straight up against what you had, cut it the exact same length, and you'll be hot to trot. So to measure this up, I'm gonna offer up the caliper to where, where it usually sits, and I'm just gonna run the cable alongside it, anchoring it as I go. So I come along, we pass them around, and then I want to be able to rotate my bars. And I'll measure to where that gets me. That sits me about here. I'm gonna mark that with some tape. So, how do we cut this thing? What you need is a knife. Obviously, the rustier, the better. Aim for a clean, burr-free cut from 90 degree end to the hose. If it's a little bit off, you're not gonna get a solid connection with the barb. Just went nice and flush and flat. So if you're a little bit off, go again. God loves a trier. Just don't take that much off. A few mil here or there probably won't hurt. So now time to fit the banjo bolt to the caliper. Then we can feed the cable through, give a final measurement, make any final trims or adjustments. And then before we cinch the cable down, I like to then fit the barb and all of everything at that stage. But I find it easier to make sure the cable is the correct length with the caliper kind of dry fitted, so to speak. So to dry fit everything properly, we need to attach the banjo bolt and the cable to the caliper. Now this is fairly straightforward. So on our banjo bolt, we have little o-rings that sit either side of it. So we need to make sure that the surface is clean, no imperfections. We usually get fresh o-rings of the kit. So you want to use them as opposed to your old ones, because these are compression o-rings and you don't they'll deform to fill the space perfectly and reusing them won't give a perfect seal. So always use fresh ones. So just press them in lightly. And then we're gonna let the bolt through. And carefully cinch on down. Now, there may be some oil or fluid left in the actual bolt itself. Give it a good clean down of brake cleaner isopropanol before progressing, because you don't want that oil to then contaminate the pads further down the line. Now this is a dry fit, so I'm not using any grease or Loctite on the bolts. So with the line threaded through, adjusted the banjo bolt so that the angle of the cable leaving the caliper fits where it mounts the frame perfectly. Dry mounted it to the frame. Just gonna offer it up. Do my rotation test. And I can probably take another three inches off. So again, mark that with tape. And uh, make another inc incision. So the hose connects to the master cylinder using a few basic components. The barb insert goes into the hose itself and gives a flat metal end to make connection with the master cylinder. Behind that is a brass olive that acts as a crush washer. We have the bolt itself that holds the whole thing together and a rubber cover that keeps the whole thing clean and free of dirt. Now fitting the barb is a fairly straightforward task and uses special clamp to keep the hose steady to allow us to hammer the barb in. As I said previously, with the Shimano hose kits, they come with what I like to call the pencil sharpener. Now this is just a simple clamp setup. Now a vise will make this job that little bit easier, but it's not 100% necessary. A set of mole grips will do the same. So I'm gonna line this up and gently take it in with a hammer. So now with the barb fitted, we need to have the rubber dust cover, the nut and the olive in the correct order to allow us to fit them to the master cylinder. So the last thing for us to do is to fit the actual hose to the master cylinder. So offer it up, making sure you've got a nice square connection. Cinch it down. Now the olive is going to compress and make a nice solid leak-free connection. 
So you're going to want to crank it down reasonably hard. And last but not least, slide on the dust cover. So that's your hose now fitted. All you've got to do now is an absolutely monstrous bleed. I'm not going to go over that in this video. We're just fitting the hose. As always, thanks for watching. Give us a like and subscribe in the comments. And let us know any hints and tips you have for getting the perfect brake bleed. As always, happy trails. Top tip, a little bit of rubber hose over the brake hose acts as a perfect frame protector in areas where it's going to rub. Also protects the hose from any sharp edges that some frames have. Now, obviously these are impossible to install once the hoses are connected to the master cylinder and caliper. So getting a fresh hose is the perfect time to fit one of these as a little extra.